So, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Leader's Edge. Well, you know that the Leader's Edge is an ongoing leadership series by Speakers Bureau. And uh, we feature guests from all over the country, um, speakers, uh, consultants, uh, HR managers, sales managers, VPs, presidents, and we, we feature them all given a certain topic where, where they are supposed to talk about certain aspects of leadership. And guess what? This is already the 11th episode of The Leader's Edge. Isn't that exciting? Uh, check us out always on YouTube and uh, let's get started. So our next guest and the person who's going to enlighten us today Okay, is first of all, let's, let's just uh, tell you what he does. He's a business consultant. He's a keynote speaker. He trains, he's a corporate trainer. And I call him a serial author because he never stops writing books. He just keeps writing books and writing books. You know what I mean? Uh, so he's a serial author. He's an all around nice guy. And I am proud to say he's my friend. Let me all welcome you. Uh, well, let me all introduce you to our next guest. Mr. Raju Mandia. Raju, hi. Hi, Boom. Thank you very much. Great introduction. And <laughs> I want to tell you that you are my friend too. More than a friend, uh, I feel that you're my brother. Oh, so thank I'm you, happy Raju. to be here in your presence. And uh, the other thing was you said enlightened. Perhaps not enlightened, just share. Just <laughs> share some thoughts and experiences that I've had. And hopefully it'll help the audience. Don't worry, that will enlighten them because it sure does me sometimes. When I was reading your article, it did, right? Okay, and I think your topic tonight is, wait, let's see. It's already, it's, it's about the five insights to thrive and succeed. Five insights to thrive and succeed, that's curious. I wonder what they are. Are you wondering, audience? Are you wondering? Well, I'm wondering, so let's, 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 uh, can we dive into this already? Wait, before before anything else, uh, Raju, did I miss any intro? Uh, did I miss anything from the intro? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, boom, you completed it. It's, it was, <laughs> you did more than justice to it. I'm thankful <laughs> for it. That's okay. Okay, great. So I'm going to dive into the very first question. And I think the audience wants to know, what are those five insights to thrive and succeed? Right. Uh, so, uh, boom, actually, it's a good thing that you mentioned five insights and you kind of stressed the word five. And just mm -hmm. at, at that moment, it struck me that one could live a life with just one insight. All right. Okay. You know, uh, before I go into the five insights, and I want to share a little uh, story I heard one time. Someone asked Confucius at his deathbed. They asked him that, Confucius, if you were to relive your life, if you were to redo everything that you've done, all the wisdom that you've shared in all these hundred years of your lifetime, what would you redo and correct yourself in? And his response was, he said, I've got thousands of books in my library. Each of those books is a philosophy by itself. And he said, if I had just taken one book, any one of those thousands of books in my library, and I just followed one book, I think my life would have been just about all right. So uh, to answer that question about five insights, I think we could just go with one. Right. Or like my friend Jack Canfield, we could go for 124 insights in life and maybe apply them all and maybe not apply them all. So uh, I offer five or let's share five just so that they become easy to remember. And then beyond the main dish, we have some dessert and some starters to go. Is that okay, okay, so this is, this is a meal we're having right now. Okay, this cool. Is I yeah, this is okay, so let's go with the starters. What is the starter? <laughs> okay, the starter, uh, one of the things that over the years, over the years of this short plus long life of mine, and not very early in life, but a little bit late in my life, I learned that I kind of can't came to understand the word abundance, a sense of abundance. You know, we all talk about it, like think abundantly or have an abundance mindset. It struck me much, much later, like a few years ago, it struck me that honestly, 
if you want something and whatever you want you don't want it beyond this earth you don't want anything from the planet mars <laughs> or from the moon nothing oh, okay whatever you want is from here right from mm -hmm. this little piece of globe and earth that we have it could be happiness it could be peace it could be wealth it could be recognition and it, it strikes me that it's all there for our getting that means mm -hmm. no one's stopping us from doing any of these things being happy being mm -hmm. peaceful being wealthy financially or otherwise being knowledgeable or getting recognition there's no one saying don't do it there's a law against this none right mm -hmm. so basically it's out there it's out there for us to go and get it the ah. question is how do we approach this abundant world with what kind of a mindset do we approach it do we go towards it thinking that yes it's possible for me or do i go into it thinking oh my gosh it's a tough world it's a dog eat dog world if i go out there they'll stop me they'll compete against me they'll put me down they'll be bitter they'll be jealous and they'll take revenge i don't think anyone's out there mm -hmm. to whose mission is to get in the way of raju or <laughs> boom right so uh, well there I'm might be a few but, but sorry <laughs> just kidding just no, kidding no no honestly <laughs> I, I, that's a good point you know uh, there might be non zero zero actually not yeah, yeah. because they're pretty busy with their own lives and if they want to get in your way mm -hmm. they're losing their life they're getting out of their own life to oh, get to your point. life that's a good that? point yeah. yeah yeah i mean think of it you know so I don't know how this happened or how we came about to be programmed in such a way mm -hmm. that people are out there to get us. I think we need to kind of rework and reinstall that program. It probably yeah. has some virus uh, infection to it. So uh, the belief is that it's a good world. It's mm -hmm. a happy world. It's, a it's gift. an abundant world. It's a gift. Much better said, you know, mm -hmm. quote unquote, it's a gift. and it's a once in a lifetime gift mm -hmm. there's no there's never been a proof of it being repeated again i don't know has any great grandfather of yours come back and said boy i'm here for the second time around no 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 no, no they no haven't come back not from my clan not from the 20 generations of the mandian family no one's come back and said hey i just got back you know it was pretty good and i missed this life no no one's come back so it's a once in a lifetime chance and mm -hmm. my opinion since that day when i kind of came into this awareness is that i'm going to be happy tomorrow morning starting oh. now and then day after that means whatever comes to me it is coming to me because i am drawing it to me or i'm moving towards it and it's totally up to me what i do with what's coming towards me or what i'm going towards how how, how so, do you how do you address people who like in this pandemic right now are feeling that life is not really that abundant how would you talk to them about this right very good great question i honestly uh not that i don't think about it like why is life become so tough the last 6 months mm -hmm. but uh then again i think that i'm looking at this life from this perspective of where i am Mm -hmm. I'm in the midst of the commotion in the chaos I'm in the midst of this crisis how can I have a higher view so the higher view would be let's say if I go up 25000 miles up into the atmosphere mm -hmm. and I can see time okay I can see a few hundred years in the past and I see a few hundred years into the future and I go higher up and I go see a thousand years in the past and a thousand years into the future So today if mankind is affected by this little virus not little okay painful not today little, yeah. but okay. it might not be painful 100 years from now True. right True, yeah. so sometimes like for example the planet earth the lovely planet earth sometimes has a tsunami sometimes it has an earthquake mm -hmm. sometimes volcanic eruptions happen does the planet earth complain no it's part of of the prime this species this creation of providence is being impacted right so maybe we should wait out we should pray 
And then we should, of course, try to survive because we have been given a will and intelligence. We yes. have been given that. So we need to survive it and then go through it. No? So big yeah. picture view, 50 years from now, I'm not yeah. saying there may be a good thing out of it, mm -hmm. but it will be part of the process of mankind's evolution. Exactly. And I think that that's what makes men uh, different from others. We're problem solvers. And uh, uh, basically, abundance means, you know, you have a problem now and you solve it because there, we're always given the tools around us to be able to solve that or address that problem. Rightly so. Rightly so. Uh, the other thing that mankind has been given, mm -hmm. which other species probably don't have because we don't know, is consciousness. Uh -huh. and intelligence that means they have they don't they, they don't have this ego thing the plants the birds the bees and the butterflies they live by the laws of the nature mm -hmm. we've been given higher intelligence and sometimes this higher intelligence may creates the challenge mm -hmm. because we are able to argue we're able to wonder like why but other creatures of providence don't question this cool yeah i agree yeah. So our appetizer was trust that life is a gift of abundance. So that's number one. Correct. All Correct. Right? Life is probably the only gift mm -hmm. and there is abundance inside that gift. That means you can make anything you want out of it. All right. Anything, so you know? how, now let's, let, let's go into the entree. <laughs> <laughs> entree okay. okay. Yeah. How, what's number two? Number two, what is number two? Number two is that though this life is a gift and it's a beautiful gift, you know, uh, you can't sit idle. Yeah? You've been given movement, you've been given intelligence, you've been given conscious, you can't sit idle. That means you have to go and serve your needs. That means you have to work <clears throat> any kind of okay. a work. You yes, could work. be a farmer, mm -hmm. you could be a farmer, you could be a garbage collector, or you could be doctor philosophy. Mm -hmm. You could be the guru of the world, or you could be the garbage collector of the world. Both these tasks have respect in them. And both these individuals or entities, they both need to work constantly. So sometimes what happens is when people have a profession, all right. Let's say that their profession is their passion driven or that is their purpose and they chose it. And sometimes they don't choose it. Sometimes they have to live with it. Mm -hmm. The thing is that people kind of complain about what they have to do. Yeah. They keep on saying life is hard. Work is hard. I have to go to work nine to five. Now, since COVID-19, uh, 1995, COVID-19, I've been sitting <laughs> on this desk and it's such a hard life. Well, it, there has to be struggle because mm -hmm. struggle is the proof of your existence. Okay. Isipin mo, pag walang struggle, mm -hmm. wala nang science ng buhay. Uh, exactly, right, right. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't you happy that you have to struggle tomorrow morning? What if you had no struggle tomorrow morning? But you know what? Uh, that brought me back to a little... Uh, my sister, who died of cancer, yeah. was uh, was prescribed morphine, and uh, she declined the morphine. And uh, the doctor asked her why, and then she said it's because the pain makes her know that she's still alive. Good, good, right, good. I yeah, mean, that's and, a very good viewpoint, by the way. Uh -huh. I'm not saying it's the smartest thing to do, yeah. uh -huh. but it's a great perspective of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the struggle makes the life. Yeah, struggle is the proof of life. Striving uh -huh. is the proof of life. When you wake up in the morning and you go brush your teeth and say, what productive thing am I going to do today? That is the proof of your existence. Yes. I mean, can you imagine? Let's just take an example. At the start mm -hmm. of this COVID, for the first three weeks, people mm -hmm. really didn't know what to do. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Then they right. began to become productive. And at this stage today, we are kind of struggling between fighting off the challenge and being productive at the same time. Uh, I come from a land called India. 
I've been in this country. Really? Before. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I come from outer space. Christian. Uh, okay. I am Christian. Okay. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, I dip, not dip, I dive into some of the old philosophies of Rumi and Ghalib and someone called Alama Iqbal. Mm -hmm. You probably don't know them, but they are philosophers from the 19th century and all of that India, China, you know, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, they follow these philosophers. And one of them claims, uh, based on what you mentioned about, was it your sister or cousin who refused the medicine? My sister, my sister. And one of them claims, and in fact, I wrote this in my book, the second book on the heart of humor. I wrote this that pain is, no, his statement is when pain crosses a certain threshold, it becomes the cure. Oh, pain, when it crosses a certain threshold, That's... it becomes the cure, it becomes healing. And this is Ghalib from India. But mm -hmm. Gibran, Khalil Gibran, who you might have read or heard about. Yeah, I, I've he heard of him, popular. but I haven't read, yeah. Yeah, but he's more popular than Ghalib. Ghalib was known within the Urdu language. Gibran was mm -hmm. known outside of the Urdu language. His statement, pain is the breaking of the shell of understanding. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's even more. Coconut, right? And then uh -huh. you smash it. Masakit mm -hmm. yung uh, buko, coconut, right? It's yeah. hard for it. But what comes out of it is fruit, is. right? Yeah. So uh -huh. think of it. Anytime you go through a hardship, mm -hmm. you've been through many. I know you boom. You yeah. know what I mean? So as everyone who probably listens to this uh, conversation between us, we all go through that pain. Mm -hmm. And what happens to us when we come out of that pain we, around us? Yeah, we become better people. Right, right, right. So the point, the insight that which we need to establish is that whatever work you do, part of the gift of life. Mm -hmm. So don't consider your work to be a job, the mm -hmm. biblical job, because you know that was a punishment. Yeah. So people yeah. think that. We are being punished by the work we have, no matter what kind of work we have, whether you you chose it or it landed mm -hmm. upon you, mm -hmm. just go. It's being given to you, take it and do it. All right. So I mean, so it's like it's like the, the struggle or the work creates value. Correct. That's what the, makes the world uh, go round. All right. That's so I, I, mm -hmm. That's what makes us second to the creator. Because we exactly. stay stuck in his favor, in alignment to what is being done, right? Right, right, right. That that was that that was very insightful, and I, I, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, it, when you do a, a hard job and you su you're successful in doing it, it becomes it, you you feel uh, you feel great, you know. It's like yeah. you, you your your value as a person is lifted. Correct, correct. Because you you accomplish something, you produce something, and you are creating something in this world. You're adding to it. And why would you be? Why would you hesitate? Yeah. From the size of your creation, from the size of the results, whether uh -huh. it is a small hill or a mountain you're building, just be happy with it. Mm -hmm. I wanna, I wanna. If you don't mind, can I share a quick little incident that occurred? Sure, 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 sure. Go ahead, go ahead. I was at. Uh, the AIM a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I don't remember what event it was, and it had to do something with HR and OD. And okay. I was sitting in the one of the back rows, and a woman, I hope she listens to this one, mm -hmm. I know her last name was Lapid, as in like Lapid's La picture. Oh, yeah. Lapid. And she came and sat next to me. She was about my age. And then we were both listening to the speaker and she said, you know, she turned to me, she said, Raju, I've been out of this for 30 years and I'm, I feel kind of disoriented and it's like I lost a chunk of my life. And I asked her, what have you been doing for 30 years? And she goes, she said, my husband fell sick and for the last 30 years, I've been looking after him. And I tell you, boom, tears roll down my eyes. Because, you know, think of it, man. Uh -huh. That was the work given to her. 
by providence, by circumstance, by chance, by choice, mm -hmm. whatever means, she got that assignment. Mm -hmm. And she saw it through. You know? Then I told her, I said, so what? I think that was as important as looking after a million people. Same thing, same thing, no? So uh, I think respect for the work and mm -hmm. not regarding it as a punishment mm -hmm. is the insight that I'd like to establish. Okay. No I, have, you know to I have here a quote from Khalil Gibran. Is that, that, that was that correct? Oh, some people, uh, the Filipinos call it Gibran, but it's Gibran. Khalil. No, that's really Gibran, Khalil Gibran. Gibran. Oh, so I, I said it correctly. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So it says here, a pearl is a product of pain. An oyster becomes extraordinary only when a speck enters the shell and creates pain. This causes yeah. the oyster to wrap the speck in a pearl-like substance. Over time, it becomes a beautiful object. How does iron ore become steel? Yes. How does... Uh, charcoal become a diamond, mm -hmm. and how, how does a gold... ordinary human being become Boom San Agustin? <laughs> <laughs> I could say the same for Radio Mandyal, right? Oh, okay, for we're... anyone, for all of us. <laughs> yeah, for anyone, exactly. Yeah, it's, for uh, all of and uh, uh, for anyone, actually, just name any successful person in the world or someone, someone even well, mildly successful, and it's the same thing. Successful is a relevant word, it's your perspective, uh -huh. you know. A guy standing on the corner of uh, Zapote and Yage Street and selling paintings for 500 pesos, sells two paintings a week, is successful from his perspective. He's happy, he's mm -hmm. thrilled, and he makes those little paintings of Bayani Han and etc. etc. Yeah. He's successful, you know. So is Bill uh, Gates. Yeah. So Bill is Gates. Jack Mom. And so <laughs> is the painter on Yage Corner Zapote. It depends. I, I think it's a perspective. If you yeah. think you're, if, if you can be the richest person in the world, but if you think you're a failure, you're a failure. Absolutely. Right. So um, I guess it's it, it's it's how you see yourself that that makes yeah. you successful. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And how you strive. So yeah. Um, yeah um, so that that was number two. Okay. Correct. That was like like consider every job to be like value creating work. Right. Right, so let's see. Now let's go to number three. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this is we're already in the uh, first part of the main course. Okay, first part so, of the main course. So we are now approaching the big, <laughs> nice, juicy steak. Steak. Yeah, of, we're good. All right. So, yeah. so um, what can you? Uh, what's number three, by the way? So uh, number three, if my memory. Uh, supports me today now that I'm a senior citizen is number one life's a gift mm -hmm. right but yeah. it's like yeah. a nice huge Christmas wrapping and you yeah. gotta unpack it to go into mm -hmm. the gift yes correct number, that's what number you have to do, you have to do. Mm -hmm. the third one is that you know in your past mm -hmm. you've been unpacking a lot of gifts mm -hmm. correct yeah now, sometimes right. people look back Mm -hmm. And they go, man, 2019 was terrible. Oh my gosh, 2017 was hell. Right? Uh -huh. So they go back, oh man, that business deal or that partnership, etc. was so terrible, man, that was the worst partnership ever. Mm -hmm. And then you think about it like, why are you looking back and gathering all the regrets and bringing them into the present? Why are oh. you doing that? What is the purpose of that, right? You pass them through, you learned through them, and you are here because you journey through that. So what people do is usually go back to the past and look at it from a very dark and a shady and a clouded lens. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. The more you go back to it, the more it will take up your reality in real time. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You'll be okay. spending precious mental energy thinking about what happened back in 1996 <laughs> you're not going yeah, to go yeah. back and correct it that's yeah. true that's true that's that's very true what was that DiCaprio movie that he wanted to go back and get his girlfriend Gatsby the great Gatsby Remember? ah yeah yeah uh -huh. he keeps saying I'm gonna bring the past into the future and uh, his sidekick the spider-man says there's no way you're gonna recreate the past 
<laughs> so uh, one of the things that I realized that given go, going from abundance to the fact that we have to open up the gift is that any gift that you were unhappy about in the past, please don't put up pictures of those negative here. Place them here. Your successes, your achievements, okay. your family's achievements, all the good laughter, put it here. And when you mix your current life with all the happy memories of the past, your mm -hmm. future is going to become better because your yeah. benchmark will change because how you measure life will change, right? Okay. How you uh, set your expectations will change. They will all become positive, uh, optimistic, mm -hmm. filled with energy. So you have to reframe those 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 things you regret. Is that correct? Yeah, reframe your regrets into something resilient and something uh -huh. hopeful. All right. So reframe the regrets into something right. Yeah. 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 Something hopeful. Okay. Yeah. Something hopeful. So I, I mean, but but um, let let's just say. Let's just say, I mean, I've had this argument with several people in the past, okay? And then they, they, they say that life is unfair and that, they, that uh, they, they keep telling me because they say you're just a, you're just a uh, Francis Kong wannabe. Well, I, well, I think that's, that's okay by me, right? If I do want to be like him. But, uh, but then they, they, they say you're, you're just feeding people false hope. And uh, they tell me these things. They really do. I, I've had one person argue with me vehemently, telling me that all I'm doing is feeding people false hope and I'm not addressing reality by, by, by reframing these regrets into something positive. Although I know he's wrong, right? But how, do you, how would you address that? If somebody said, Raju, this is all baloney? Yeah. Well... I'd settle for his opinion, like what's his opinion of life? And he goes, this is my opinion of life. And I would ask him, are you happy with it? Then what would his answer be? I don't know because he... No, because he's, he's not happy Jay with what... Yeah. He's not happy with what paradigms he sustains, right? Yes, yes. His true. whole paradigm is negative. So what makes you happy? Say, I don't know. Well, at least I know that these things make me happy. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know, right? So uh, there will always be people. There will always be Thomases who will doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there will always be doubting Thomases. And I think that's why uh, leadership comes in. That's where you and I come in that through all the challenges, through all the resistances, through all uh, the naysayers, we need to follow the one, the thing that's working inside of us. And inside of us, it's saying that this is a gift. I need to work, right? I need to look at things positive. And you need to be passionate and sold on that subject matter. And you need to keep on doing it because it won't change the world in one snap. Mm -hmm. you know? So you need to keep on doing it. And that's the journey. So there will always be naysayers, boom. And even mm -hmm. if you are uh, emulating someone, and yeah. that's fine. That's fine. I mean... Uh, yeah, why not, we were, right? We were, not works. Born, <laughs> we were not born with content. We were not even born with a processor or some application. We were born with a structure which could mm -hmm. take in new programs, which could take in new apps, mm -hmm. right? And we are using them. So what if we look at some app and somebody's processor and say, okay, that processing works for me, I'll do mm -hmm. it, fine. Because think of it, whether you are emulating someone we're all connected. We're all connected. We are learning from mm -hmm. each other. Can you imagine a life that we are not learning from other people? Yeah, yeah. I, I Who get am that. I learning from? I didn't come down from the heavens with a book. Mm -hmm. Neither was there a USB attached to me which I could plug in. <laughs> None. Uh, okay, uh, let's let's go to the to the actual main course. This is the I think for me when I was reading your article, this is the heart of your five. Okay, the number four. Okay, yeah. so uh, what what the I think it has something to do with goals and how you get to your goal. Okay, well, uh, can you, you explain? Can well, you explain? you're a coach, boom, and you are also a sales consultant. You're also That's a motivational true. speaker, and all of us 
talk about the importance of goal, uh, goals. Uh, what, what exactly do goals mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, most all of us dream. No dreams, mm -hmm. no mind, right? right. That's right. That's all right. of us dream. We dream about tomorrow. We dream about tonight, right? Oh, call it a hope, call it a vision, call it an ex uh, expectation, what have you, right? That means we are looking forward to be in a certain place and create an environment for ourselves and, of course, for people around us. And maybe if we are of a stronger mind, of a stronger will, then we are trying to create value for a larger community. It depends on our guts and our courage. In Tagalog, we call it, depende sa tapang natin. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, all of us have those expectations. Now, the thing is that you really can't jump into that expectation, which is into the distance. You have to walk. Yeah. You have to walk. You have to run. Maybe you can uh -huh. take a motorcycle or drive. Doesn't matter. But the journey has to be made. Mm -hmm. And whenever a journey has to be made, there have to be milestones. We have mm -hmm. to know when to make a left turn, when to make a right turn, mm -hmm. when to pay the toll. So these are milestones. So we yes. need to specify them that we'll make a right turn after 20 miles. So that's a specific goal. Mm -hmm. After 20 miles, right turn is a goal. What yeah. it means is that if you're dreaming and if your dream is larger than you, you need to take careful, measured steps towards it. That's a goal. Okay. Why? Because look, 8 billion people are moving towards gold. Mm -hmm. 8 billion people in the world are moving towards something that they want. And there is traffic. Mm -hmm. So you need to decide where you want to go, how you want to go, how much energy you want to invest in it, how much time and money you want to spend in it, whose partnership you want to call for, and mm -hmm. then go towards it. So that becomes a really a cognitive effort rather yes. than just an emotive effort of dreaming. It becomes a cognitive effort and yeah. we need that journey. We need that map to follow and we mm -hmm. need to create that map ourselves. Yeah. And so you mentioned... Mine, an American... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no. I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, no, no. You mentioned like uh, uh, in, in the article, I read something that said like it, you, you achieve your goals inch by inch and it yeah, reminded... Yeah. And it reminded me of uh, a movie I watch any given Sunday. If you yeah, watch Al Pacino, uh, Al Pacino, Al Pacino, Al Pacino. And, yeah, yeah, uh, I love that. Uh, Cameron Diaz, okay. Yeah, and then yeah, he that. had, and then he he had this speech, and he said, "Life is a measure of inches and seconds." And he says, "It, it Anna, you win a game by inches because it's yeah. a football game." You don't yeah. win. Uh, you you win if you're one inch ahead of the other person. You you won, okay? You have won. Yeah. So yeah. life is a game of inches, and yeah. that 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 just reminded me of that uh, that that speech. Right, that right. I, I remember I watched that speech, and of course, Al Pacino is a fabulous actor, speaker, yes. and uh, the only thing that speech was that from his perspective, uh, the world was a battlefield. Yes. And you want to win it inch by inch. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference that I'm putting across is that the mm -hmm. world is not a battlefield. Yes. Okay. It's a large world. It's a lot mm -hmm. of people are moving around. And then we need to move with compassion. But yes, we need to inch up. Yes. We need to inch up. But in the process of inching up, we don't need to scratch someone else. Got and, it. Yes. Uh, True. We don't need to scratch someone else. We don't need to drag someone down. We don't need to be crabs. <laughs> yeah, you uh -huh. don't need to be crabs. Uh, how I picked up this uh, phrase was several years ago, there was a motorcycle supplier, not a supplier, but somebody who wanted to put up a Harley Davidson mm -hmm. dealership in the Philippines. And he was an American and he came looking for a life partner in this country. And he said, I remember it was so beautiful. He said, uh, yard by yard, Life is very hard. Yard by yard, life is very hard. I like that. Inch by inch, it's a cinch. Oh! Isn't that okay. cool? Okay, all right. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Okay. I'll, 
I'll keep that one. That's cool. Yard by yard, it's very hard. Inch uh -huh. by inch, it's a cinch. And that's why every morning, mm -hmm. a farmer goes out to plow his land, to till mm -hmm. his land, to plow, to put in seeds, to water it, you know, to pull out the weeds. And that's why you and I, every single day, we mm -hmm. come to our laptops. We, yeah. We, we take in data, we take in knowledge, and then we kind of blend it around and we create something valuable for our customers, our clients, our stakeholders. And okay. that's our job. We need to come to it inch by inch. Can you imagine that if you got an assignment, mm -hmm. consulting assignment, and bang, all you had to do was flip a green switch and there you had a solution for them. Yeah. You need to do needs analysis, you need to talk to the client, et cetera, et cetera. Then you come back and you research some paradigms and put mm -hmm. them into practice, go to them, deliver it, measure it. That's goal setting. That's yeah, goal that's achievement. true. That's true. That's, I agree with you 100%. I agree yeah. with you. But I love that saying, okay, yard, <laughs> okay, yard by yard, the life is hard. But inch by inch, it's a cinch. I yes. like that saying. Cool. Yes, and that, that 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 is the saying for the night uh, audience. That is the saying for the night. Take that down. You wait, you wait. heard it first here. <laughs> so I okay. have something else. I have, no, to, go ahead, I have go something ahead. to substantiate that statement. Mm -hmm. uh, how much time do we have here? Uh, we have about uh, te ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, okay, I'll give you a ninety second story. Okay. Uh, like you, I idolize someone in India. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's a very popular actor and now he's a very good social worker. He's been around for 45, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And his father was a poet. And he shares a story. He says, my father used to go for a walk every day, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, New Delhi. And then every day he would come back from a 60 minutes walk. He'd bring back a unique rock, you okay. know, something to place in the family garden. And that was father's hobby, bringing back rocks from his walks. That, mm -hmm. I like that, rocks from his walks, no? <laughs> okay. And one day, Daddy-O mm -hmm. comes to the door, not with a rock, but with a boulder, oh. the size of the door of his house, and he's brought it to the house. And son goes down to father and says, Father, how did you bring this boulder to the house? Every day you bring home a rock the size of a tennis ball or a football, this time you brought back something the size of our door. How did you do it, Daddy-O? And? Daddy-O says, I didn't bring it in today. For the last three months I've been walking, every time I push this rock a few inches towards our house, it was like about a few miles away, mm -hmm. and today after three months of pushing it just a bit by bit, bit by bit, it's in our garden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, yeah, that is it. That, that explains the inches very well. <laughs> I, okay, now it's time for dessert, Raju. So yes, I, I, I think uh, I, I, the last part was about uh, thinking in systems and think yes. ecology. How, yes. how, how, how do you explain this? So again, uh, this is wisdom from someone else, uh, Boom. Uh, the mm -hmm. wisdom is from a gentleman called Peter Senge, Dr. Peter mm -hmm. Senge, the author of the book called The Fifth Discipline. Ah, and okay. uh, the way I came to it was through another gentleman called Professor Gonzalez, Dicky Gonzalez. Ah, okay. AIAM LaSalle, Dicky Gonzalez, must be in his 70s now, lives in Alabang, little goatee and <laughs> shiny head. And yeah. he one day asked me to do a little event at the Asian Institute of Management for. Mm -hmm system thinking i had no idea what system thinking was at that time i used to do creative thinking innovation yeah 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 and so i hit the books mm -hmm. and it was the most amazing philosophy ever mm -hmm. and uh, the most amazing practical philosophy ever and what does this say so it says so it comes from the book the fifth discipline and of course it's almost the same as what i've shared with you mm -hmm. uh According to Senge, there are five disciplines. One is mental models, mindset, yes. you know, yeah. mindset. Yeah, I, I, I. And uh, I'm trying to remember the other three, but the last of the three, the last of the five, according to Senge, is system thinking. What is that? That means here I am, yours truly, Raju Mantian, formerly from India, currently from the Philippines, mm -hmm. and I have a dream. Oh. 
right? I have a dream, quote unquote, Martin Luther. Martin I Luther dream. King. <laughs> yeah. I have a dream and I want to go through that dream and I begin to work, you know, insight number two, I begin to work towards my dream and then I look back at my past and I'm happy with my past and I'm moving inch by inch, correct? I'm correct. focused towards my destination. I want to mm -hmm. go. I want to go to Timbuktu. I want to hit Dumagete or whatever the destination in my mind is. But on my journey, realize this, that I am a social animal. That means mm -hmm. I have a family. I have people who care for me, people who depend on me, and there are people who are affected, impacted by what I do. Okay. Right? So when I journey towards my dream, I go inch by inch every single day. I must kind of become aware of these relationships, these networks, these systemic links with people who care for me, people who are attached with me, people who will be impacted by my passion, by my focus, because they have needs from me and they offer me things and they're linked to me. No? It's becoming socially conscious, it's becoming economically conscious, it's becoming okay. ecologically conscious. So I mustn't do anything, or at least I must refrain, try my utmost, try my best est, mm -hmm. if there is such a word in the English language, to not create harm. That means if I am, you know, driven towards something, I should be careful that I don't uh, step on boom's toes. <laughs> oh, well, uh, there, if I there, move too fast, Mm -hmm. uh, my son and his family doesn't lose my support, right? Mm -hmm. Or if I am uh, building a bridge or a dam mm -hmm. across a river, I need to make sure that the people who were receiving or living off that river mm -hmm. have some means. I need to be careful of those ecological connections and i'm not right. talking about just nature i'm talking about human relationships yeah so that is system thinking that means thinking beyond what i see not just thinking mm -hmm. in a linear manner but thinking in a very complex manner thinking yeah. through what can be impacted and then gently moving forward and, so it's, uh, it's not just result orientation it's also process orientation it's consciousness it's awareness yeah, okay. of other awareness of the other, uh -huh. awareness of the other no because, uh -huh. uh, like in any 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 uh, complex system mm -hmm. let's say a car so the pinaka simplest system is a bicycle okay correct and if you choose that <laughs> I prefer that my front wheel should be a really fat big one. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. And you shove it into the bicycle. And the rest of the framework and the moving parts of the bicycle can't carry that. Mm -hmm. Then your dream is not doing justice to the systems. Yeah, and, and it will break it down anyways. It will break down systems. It will impact other systems. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. So systems will shatter. So two things happen when we make these decisions. No? Uh, whatever decisions we take and we mm -hmm. begin to go towards them, sometimes that journey towards that dream or that decision creates something called virtuous cycles. That okay. means the impact is positive all around. Mm -hmm. Not just positive, but fruitful and beneficial to all and benign to all. And then sometimes it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. It creates negative impact, it creates harm, it draws blood, it becomes malignant, you know. Mm -hmm. So, But then again, our job, our intelligence that Providence provides, uh, provided us, that's where we discern between what's a virtuous cycle and a vicious cycle, and mm -hmm. that is systems thinking. Okay. Anyway, actually, thanks for wrapping that up because it was we're, we're already close to the end of time right here. But let's just do a, uh, a summary. So the first one, uh, the first of your, uh, what's this again? Five insights to thrive and succeed. The first part is trust that life is a gift of abundance. Correct? Yep. The next one is consider every job to be value creating work. Okay. Then the, the third one is reframe regrets into right thought or right decisions. And then 
you have the, the fourth one, which I love the most, really, is work your goals inch by inch. And then finally, think systems, think ecology. So that's a very good wrap up. I think that that's, that's a, a holistic way of looking at things. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to end this series. I'd like to end this talk. Thank you again to Mr. Raju Manjan, very wise person. And just as an ender, I'd like to say this. Learning is a never-ending process with unlimited vistas. And with that, thank you very much. Have a great night. blood, sweat, and tears, just like a success story ninyo, and uh, which made me where I am now. It's all because making that simple decision. Let me ask you, I'm sure you are experiencing now even beyond what you imagine, correct? Oh, see? Because once you start moving in the right direction, kataas, no? I mean, it will just go it will propel you to greater heights. Even if it is not yet true, you think, you believe, then you act like it is true. It will come true. Uh, you know that you're already earning money. These are the perceptions of the members. So you're uh, afraid to go out to your comfort zone. It's from the media. You should go out uh, outside your comfort zone. So take a leap. Good news normally are in the back pages. And if we are not wise enough, our thinking will be influenced by what we are bombarded on a daily basis. And show them the right way. Because I believe everyone's here have a winning edge. Thank you. Thank you.